Oh, hi there. You just caught me talking to my fish. It's uh, Tuesday, February 4th. I am Max Scoville, and this is your Destructoid news update with all your hot news about video games that have that has happened since the last time I did one of these videos. So one ongoing story we've been following is Nintendo's recent financial struggles and how the Wii U and 3DS are not selling quite as well as the company had hoped they would. Last week, Satoru Watt, Nintendo's president, did a little press conference thing and talked to some people and some analysts and stuff and addressed what the company plans to do in the future. We are going to create a system that can absorb the Wii U architecture adequately. When this happens, home consoles and handheld devices will no longer be completely different and they will become like brothers in a family of systems. Iwata went on to say that iOS and Android had been kind of inspirations for this and pointed the idea of having, uh, you know, one platform that multiple devices can access. This is interesting because uh, if you look at previous Nintendo hardware, excluding the Wii and the GameCube, which were working on kind of similar architecture, pretty much everything before that had been on totally drastically different designs. I mean, you look at the difference between the N64 and the Super Nintendo and the NES, they were kind of always just like, what if we tried this? What about this? What could go wrong? But of course, with third-party development, that could be more tricky. So they're trying to make it more accessible to developers, and of course, also to people who own two systems. Would this mean cross-play sharing, cross-buying? I don't know. Remains to be seen. So you might recall the game Murdered Soul Suspect, which is a game that Square Enix is working on. I think it got shown off around E3 last year. Basically, you play as a guy who is uh, has been murdered, and he has to solve the mystery of his own murder, but he's a ghost, so he has powers, and you can use the powers because it's a video game. Well, it's been announced that that is going to be coming to, well, I guess current gen console, so Xbox One and PS4. There is no release date for those yet, but it will be coming to PC 360 and PS3 sometime this spring. I have to say, I'm, I'm really I'm really not quite a fan of the character design here. Uh, this gentleman's wearing a fedora, and he's got a wallet chain. And, uh, you know, all due respect to anyone who's watching who has a fedora and a wallet chain, but uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just not a fan of that look. I guess he's a ghost so he can get away with it, you know? Maybe it's like, you know, when you're old, you can wear sweatpants pulled up to here, and when you're a ghost, you can wear fedoras and wallet chains, but who am I to say? As you guys all know, Disney owns the rights to Marvel and Star Wars, so they have a complete monopoly on everyone's childhood. Uh, and they also have that cool Disney Infinity thing, which is like Skylanders, except with accessories and with kind of an open world sandbox mode. You can build your own levels and make cool jumps and have Buzz Lightyear ride around in the tow truck and all the all just the funnest things. And now the obvious thing is we're all wondering, when are we going to see Star Wars and, and Marvel stuff in the Disney Infinity? Well, according to the Wall Street Journal, that will be happening soon and that there are plans to do exactly the most obvious thing you could possibly think of to make money off of uh, children and giant children. Unfortunately, there's some bad news here too. This article is also about how Disney Interactive is laying off several hundred employees. They have 3,000 employees total, so several hundred is a pretty big chunk of their workforce, and that kind of sucks considering that they have all of the money. Why would you do that? Come on, these people need to make little toy Boba Fett so I can make them race around in Blackbird Jet. A couple weeks ago, I showed you guys the mysterious trailer for the upcoming PS4 and Vita title, Kodoku, which is not a Sudoku game or involving Kotaku. Sorry, dumb jokes, had to get out of the way. Uh, this is actually a, kind of a stealth horror game, sort of adventure elements, that is apparently set on an island and incorporates Lovecraftian themes, but also with uh, traditional Japanese folklore. Here are a bunch of screenshots that showed up. I have to say, I don't, I I'm, I have not seen things that look like this in quite some time. It's so nice to see a horror game that isn't just, you know, set in a dusty old hallway where you have a flashlight and things jump out at you. This actually looks like it might have some genuine creepiness to it. Unfortunately, we're not gonna get Kodoku until sometime in 2015, so that is still a ways off, but hey, Screenshots, everybody. If you are a fan of things that are robotic and isometric, then you should probably go look at Matador. This is a PC game that I guess is heading to Steam Greenlight sometime in the near future. And it is a, it is a game where you are a, you are a robot and you have to clear out an entire city in, in one night. You have to fight all the things and blow them all up. I love the lighting here. I think it looks it looks kind of like, like a cops episode, except with robots. You get that wonderful orange glow of streetlights. It looks beautiful. Do you like butts and swimwear well then you should probably go check out this dead or alive 5 ultimate edition swimwear pack so that you can dress up your fighting game characters in lurid apparel i would like to point out that dead or alive 5 came out in september of 2012 and they are still releasing new bikinis for it so there you go there's your news for february 4th 2014 i am max scoville do you like my fish tell me what you think of my fish in the comments i will talk to you guys later